from the Holy Gospel according uh, to Matthew. The eleven disciples went out to Jerusalem, to Galilee, to the mountain to which the Lord had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped. They doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. There are many things I will appreciate more post-COVID. Already I have enjoyed seeing people's teeth, especially their smiles. It is amazing how much a smile can bring to life. I appreciate what we are doing now, coming together to celebrate Mass live, in person, and able to exchange pleasantries on the church steps something I would have taken for granted only a year ago. However, more important than these has been my greater appreciation of the Trinity. There are many mysteries with the Trinity, not the least of which is why did God reveal it to us if we're never going to understand it? The usual answer has been that as we uh, can say about the, all that we can say about the Trinity, is that God is least poorly understood as being in relationship and that these relationships are least poorly seen as what we call love. There are many important things which can flow from this. Most important is that the triune God is best reflected in community and that community is most securely formed by love. Now, I can now deluge you with scripture quotes, and I assume that many of you have realized that I hope I will be asked for them after Mass, but few of you make that mistake anymore. So let me use two COVID-related examples to illustrate the connection between the triune God and this community. Teenagers, particularly teenage girls, have especially suffered during COVID. There has been an increase in sleep dysfunctions and loss of appetite. The cause is usually seen as a psychological. That is certainly true as far as it goes, but I think it is also metaphysical. Teenagers are designed to explore life and to expand their world. Most importantly, to learn how to be in relationship with other people beyond their families. As we better realize now, there is something about human interaction when you're in the room with somebody which cannot be fulfilled on Zoom. Philosophers call this tacit learning. It is what we can read, if only unconsciously, in a face, an experience with bodily posture and countless other signs of which we are not consciously aware. Like the Blessed Trinity, we are who we are because of our relationship. This is what is meant when we say that we are made in the image and likeness of God. Not that God has made us so that we look like him physically. He does not have a physical form but that we are made to be 
to use the least offensive analogy, with others in community. This is being like God. When he reveals that he is love, he is telling us that in order to be who he has created us to be, our relationships must be based on love. Our love is puny compared to his. But notice some things about it. It is constantly giving. God has revealed not only that he is love, but that each person of the Trinity has, be, has been emptied by giving everything. God tells us, he whom the Father has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hand. It brings together not casts apart. The love of the Trinity is so great that there are three persons, but still one being. Our minds will never understand, but many marriages, and with some mystics, there is an inkling of what this unity is like, and what is offered to us. John says to all disciples that after the Spirit has come, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The more our relationships reflect, however dimly, the love of God, the more we will truly be living in his image, and the more we will be truly human. I hope that we have learned from the pandemic that if we wish our parish to be in the image of God, we can only do so by strengthening the personal relationships within it. Another group that was especially affected were older people. Because we were particularly susceptible to the virus, we needed to separate ourselves from physical contact with others. This could mean that older people literally were untouched by human hands for months. It was devastating. Let me share, you, share with you how I learned this. I was in a parish where Sunday Mass was very long, and the kiss of peace became our seventh inning stretch. I felt sorry for the children in particular, and without really thinking about it, told them that they could walk around the church and if they shook hands with old people. They did, and Mass went on even longer. After a few weeks, an older woman got me after Mass and said she wanted to talk to me about the kiss of peace. I braced myself. Before she could say anything, she started tearing up told me that her family had moved away. and This was the only time during the week that anyone touched her. And that, and I'll never forget these words, made her feel human. It should come as no surprise to Christians. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He became flesh and bone. Our love must follow here as well. Love must be spiritual, but it can never be ethereal. It must literally touch other people. It is interesting that last year's St. Charles had nothing which directly touched people in need, and now we have a thriving food pantry. Can we really think that this is an accident? If we are open to the love of the triune God, what else will spring up? Who else will be touched? If my appreciation of the, of the theology of the Trinity has not changed this year, my appreciation and realization of the experience that is the Trinity has. What God wishes us to know about the Trinity will not be found in thinking but in loving.